fastest Mustang you've ever done, production Mustang, left and right, and the fastest Mustang you've done in a straight line. And the innovation and technology that the engineering men and women of Ford Motor Company have put into this is why you can take a car that's almost 4,000 pounds and do zero to 60 in three, five, and do a sub 11 second quarter mile, and you can run VIR or your racetracks faster than any other Mustang we've ever produced, and faster than a lot of cars that are two, three, and four times its price. It's not inexpensive, but it is still an incredible relative performance value. Um, and when you guys get to experience it on the track out there, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So that's it. Good. Walk to the back over here. Now, this car that we flipped up on its side, we hope that that's not the position you ever end up in. You know, we don't want you up here on its side. But what we wanted to do is be able to show you, and if we come around this side and try to do the six foot social distancing, I wanted to begin to talk a little bit about the technology. It's a little quieter now. Can you guys hear me without it, or do you want me to go back on? The, the okay. mic. The mic. So, what we wanted to do here is kind of show you the things that you cannot see when the vehicle is on its all four wheels in its normal position. And this is a good time to talk about our partners who are here with us today and the partners who helped us engineer this vehicle. But if you start from the front to the back and you can get a chance after we're done to kind of go over here, we can kind of start with the, the partner aspects of it. If you see these tires here, the ones on the carbon fiber track pack, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. You know, they say it's all about the tennis shoes. The engineering team from Ford Performance and Michelin worked together to develop not only the tread, but the compound specifically for this vehicle. And I like to think of it like if you're baking cookies and are, are muffins in a tin pan. They developed not only the dough, but the pan that it's molded in specifically for this car. When you're talking 625 foot-pounds of torque that you're delivering to it, you want to make sure that the shoes stand there. Our Brembo brakes, six-piston calipers done with Brembo. Brembo, working with the Ford Performance folks, developed a rotor system and caliper system that increased the swept area from the, from the, the GT350 in the, even the, comp, the R model, I almost say competition model, to be 25% more swept area under the pad to stop this when you're going 138 miles in the track speed in the quarter mile, you want to be able to know that that vehicle can stop and Brembo and the Ford Performance team work together. You can't see it in this position, we'll talk about it over here, Carbon Revolution builds the pre-titled vehicle wheels, which are carbon fiber, exposed carbon fiber. Um, and then Tremec and Justin, are you here? Justin back here is from Tremec. Um, we developed the first Tremec. We're sharing with the country club members here. So Tremec developed their first legit dual clutch transmission and that's not an automatic, right? It is a electronically controlled manual transmission. And you know, Justin's much smarter in how it works than I am. And he can talk to you about that as well if you have questions about it. But that's what delivers the magic from the engine through the transmission. We also have our partners with Mercaro here. Uh, Mercaro developed this seat for the Shelby GT500 that meets not only all the FMVSS standards, but also laterally supports you on a racetrack when you are consistently pulling over 1.2 Gs and, and can hold laterally over 1.1 Gs, you want a seat that actually helps you hold in place. And then finally, Eaton, who developed a 2.65 liter supercharger. And if you think about it, I told you that EcoBoost is 2.3 liters. The supercharger that Eaton developed with the Ford Performance team is 2.65 liters. 
So we have a bigger displacement supercharger than our 300 horsepower EcoBoost Mustang, which is absolutely incredible. So, Croft, how am I doing on time? 35 minutes. How much? 35. I'm at 35 already? Oh man, I haven't practiced this in a while. Sorry guys, I'll try to go through it a little bit quicker. If we wanna come down over here, we'll start with the transmission and then you can ask Justin the specific questions. But what this does, I am a third pedal lover. I love the ability to push in that third pedal, grab the gear, come in, do my heel toe, do my rev matching. But that's not necessarily the fastest way to change your gear. Now, Gary Patterson, where's Gary? Gary Patterson's a great driver. He was one of Carol's test drivers when he was alive. Gary is really good with that third pedal. How long would it take you maybe from a 2-3 shift? 0.25 seconds. 0.15 seconds. And that's if he gets it exactly right, the heel toe in, he's under load, he takes it off, he gets it back in there. If you blink your eyes, that is how fast this Tremec 7-speed dual clutch transmission shifts. Less than 80 milliseconds. Now, if you are building an all out performance vehicle and you want it to be the fastest on the drag strip and the road course, when Carol and Shelby American team, you know, did the ads in the 60s and he said, Carol Shelby is my name and performance is my business. He didn't sit there and say, Carol Shelby's my name and manual transmission performance is my business. You know, what he wanted to do was build that fastest car and grab the technology and it. The folks from Tremec, working with our Ford Performance engineers, have developed not only the hardware, but the software that when you come out of the turn called patience and go into the straight line, and let's just say you make the wrong line and you break a little bit too late. It will automatically put you into the gear and the RPM that will get you out of the turn regardless of how you drive in the fastest way possible. It, it, it's mind-numbing. And like a lot of us who are have egos, we will sit there and say, I want to use my Tremec 3160 box, right? I want to use that third bell and I'm, gonna, I'm better than that. Well, a lot of us first started doing this with the paddles and doing the paddle shifting. Both Gary and I, who did some laps yesterday, we left it in complete track mode and did not touch the paddles because it is far smarter at correcting our mistakes than we are. Uh, if you want to go, if you have other questions, Justin is here from Tremec. We have a great video from the whole transmission development. If you really want to get into it, it is extremely informative and you can learn an awful lot from Jason. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the supercharged power. How much time do I have, Crawford? 50 minutes. Five zero? All right. I wanna talk a little bit about the supercharger. Um, working with Eaton, the engineers developed it, and we have a cutaway over here, and I really think if you get a chance, you should come over here and look at the cutaway. Not only is it developed to sit below the V and the V8, so that the oscillation, because spinning is like something that's disrupted while you're racing, so it is lower, but they designed the impeller blades for it to maximize the boost that they can put through in as rapid of a time as possible. So if you get a chance to come over here and look at the way that this is designed, and if you want to touch and pick up the parts, we are actually cleaning them through here after each group, so we will wipe them down so you can actually touch those. Um, but you can see how it's developed. The 765.2 liter has a cross plane crank instead of the flat plane crank. There are substantially other differences that we did in it, but we took all of those differences and put it into the GT350 engine as well. We had to make it a little bit stronger to handle that forced air and to actually be able to handle the extra horsepower because there's a big difference between 526 and 760. 
But one of the things that I wanted to point out, and I think you'll see it at the handling one, is each of these engines are signed. And when you go to the handling, the, the zero to 60 to zero, they're gonna open up the hood so you can see the engine actually in place. They will talk about the men and women who build those. So if you give me a chance, we'll walk over here to the wheels and tires. We call it track precise. So on the carbon fiber track package, our partners Carbon Revolution, who builds the Ford GT wheel, the GT350 wheel, and now the GT500 wheel. This is a 20 inch diameter wheel. We went back to Carbon Revolution and said, hey, we want you to make it the same weight as the 19 inch that is on the GT350. Go do it. <laughs> you know, they figured out a way to actually make a larger outside diameter carbon fiber wheel with a wider base to the wheel, the same weight as the, the 19 inch that's on the GT350. Why is that important? I have a dad bod, right? My best weight to lose is right here in my midsection. When you are racing a car or driving enthusiastically on a racetrack, the most important weight to lose is unsprung rotational mass. Well, what is the largest thing that's unsprung and rotational? That's your wheel and tire combo. So this saves almost 50 pounds from the aluminum ones that we have. 50 pounds of unsprung rotational mass makes a huge difference. Um, so one of the things that you can demonstrate here is you kind of take this and spin it and then take the aluminum one that we have, which is still good, don't get me wrong. I mean, this is still incredible, but I want to talk a little bit about the technology and the carbon fiber. It takes more inertia to get this spinning than it does that, and you can actually feel it. Then the other thing that I do, sorry, I don't need to get that close. You are not close right now. Um, I mean, if you want to, here, hold the back side of this. Okay. Wow, isn't that, that's so light. Isn't that amazing? That's so if you want to get a chance, I mean, when we talk about the innovation and in technology changing from the 60s to today, this is a huge piece of it. Um, and you can also feel the difference from the aluminum. All right, we want to come over here to the brake and wheel. This is what Gary was referring to before. This to me demonstrates two things about the racers in the 60s. They were far better athletes than we are today for racing, and they are far crazier than what we would ever do. This is the Goodyear tire and wheel from the Shelby GT 567. And you can see, man, it looks pretty good. Yeah, nice deal in there, roll over on the bias ply as you're going through the, through the apex. The diameter of our rotor exceeds the outside diameter of the wheel from 67 and the width of the caliper on the rotor exceeds the width of the tire that they drove on and after you drive that picture doing what you're doing out there on something like this so they were far better athletes and far crazier than we ever were um, so on this side of the track precise Magna Ride, who we work with pretty closely. Um, a lot of people have the Magna Ride technology. The art and the science of it is how you get it to perform. And not unlike the Tremec transmission that shifts at 80 milliseconds, if your front left wheel goes over the rumble strip in the Magna Ride, your back right wheel will know what position to be in from a pressure by the time that the wheel gets there. So it is adjusting the suspension based off of what it feels and they can change it from the time your, your front tire hits you know, on a road, a pothole, your back one will know what pressure to be at. It's absolutely amazing. And the calibration of that with the basically the transmission shifting and the engine calibration management, along with the ABS and traction control. All of those are tied in together 
to give you the best performance at the point in time that you are driving. And it's amazing technology. Brembo, if you want to get a chance, you felt the wheel, lift up that Brembo six piston caliper if you get a chance. It is massive. And when you're going 170 miles an hour down a straightaway, and here there's seven different braking zone cones on there, you want to make sure that that thing can stop. And that thing, as you can see, the vented two-piece here, pub on rim for the cooling aspect of it, along with this six-piston caliper that you can see here, definitely gives you that stopping power associated with it. Now, if you go over here to the suspension piece, this is the strut tower mount. And you see a lot of strut tower brackets that are made of aluminum and steel and various different components. We went to a different magnesium alloy to manage the torsional rigidity while reducing weight. Now, I like to do my tricep curls. Here, hold on. Wait a minute, here, catch. I mean, this thing provides the torsional rigidity that you need to supplement your suspension and a weight that is probably less than the 12 ounce beer can that you carry. So if you get a chance to go through and do that, take a look at that. I thought this was plastic at first. Yeah, it does. It, it looks like that. All right, now if we want to come back, if you're going to go those speeds, you have to be able to manage it from a design that is both visually appealing, but engineering with the functional capabilities. So Melvin Bentoncourt, who is our chief designer on the Shelby GT500, worked with the engineering team to ensure that we had the aero downforce the cooling that was necessary, and to reduce the coefficient of drag while not providing the lift that will take your car off. You had to combine all of those things with a beautiful design standing still. So we brought this car over here to kind of talk a little bit about how we got there. Um, this is not the car that you'll see in the showroom, obviously, and not the car that you're gonna drive. This is our Aerobuck. And what we used to do this was 3D printing. So in the manufacturing process, you have a certain amount of time from the start till the time you have to go into production. And learning what you can do to improve the performance over that time period will give you what you can produce. So if you can speed up the process with which you can make changes, to improve the performance over that same amount of time, you get a larger performance gain. So what the engineers would do is go from the CAD design, the CFD, hey, what does this look like from the computer standpoint? Then they would tool apart. they put it in the wind tunnel, the slow speed wind tunnel, to see what it would do. Then they take it to the test tracks and say, hey, do what we see in the aero tunnel match up with what we think it's gonna do on the track. Then they take it to the high speed tunnel in Charlotte and say at the 200 mile an hour with the rolling ground underneath it to simulate driving, does it match up? And as they learn, they say, okay, I need to take the front splitter wicker and make it about five millimeters wider to get more air disruption so that the car can go through with a better CD. Normally that would take weeks to do, to redesign, retool, and go through that same process. They could make the change at the track, go back to Dearborn, the people who are there, print out the new component, and turn around and send it back down to the track to see if it made a difference. Now, these pieces, you know, you can touch them, they're, they're like 3D printed parts, but could work in the wind tunnels. So what the engineering and design team were able to do were make much more changes quicker 
that allowed us to develop that performance that we wanted out of the design. Now, you see this six foot open air with a pan underneath it. You know, that design is substantially different than the one that we ended up with. We were able to reproduce that part so many different times to see what we needed to get the airflow through in a faster methodology that allowed us to deliver the performance that we did. And if you go around to the back and you can kind of grab some of those wings over here, you can see that the gurney flap here is substantially different than the one we ended up learning on. What we were able to do through this 3D printing and CFD was to develop 397 foot-pounds of downforce with the gurney flap on, just this little gurney flap here on the handling package, and then take the wing, the carbon fiber wing that's on the carbon fiber track package, directly off the GT4 race car, make it out of carbon fiber to position that allows more than 550 pound-feet of downforce. We were able to do that based off of the aero packages with the designers to make that car more performance oriented. So then if you think about that from a design standpoint, now you still have to get air through to cool. And this car is track capable. It can do a full out track day in Utah, <laughs> you know, in the high heat and the low humidity. So to do that, you still have to get air to go through reduce your coefficient of drag, keep the downforce down there, and to get the cooling in here. And you can see the 11 different components that we did on this cutaway that actually allow the air to go through for the transmission cooler, the oil cooler, the radiators. I'm missing a couple here. Oh, the high temp radiator, a low temp supercharger cooler, all of those air functions had to be managed and designed into that. And so what we did is we put the cutaway here on the front so you can see where the air goes from coming in and where it comes back out. And some of this isn't like, you know, advanced aerospace technology, right? And you can look back here on the flaps that just open when there's change of pressure. It's just a little hinge flap. But it improves the cooling when the back pressure comes off these open when it's necessary. So they had to put all of those design characteristics into the sheet metal that was designed to make it look not only beautiful and representative not only of the 60s era, but what today looks like, as well as all the functional components. And Melvin and his team did a great job on the design aspect of it. Okay, I spent way too much time. I gotta get better at this proper. Sorry about that. I'll be more efficient as the day goes on. Um, so I want to thank you for taking the time to come through this and learn what you are going to be driving out there. Um, and if you have any questions, Justin from Tremec is over here as well to answer on the Tremec transmission. Um, the the uh, Recaro people are up there where you get fitted for your helmets. You're going to be sitting in actually Recaro seats. You can talk to them, Nicole and Laura up there. Um, and then you have some of the Brembo braking systems here. They wanted to be here, but their company's not letting them travel during COVID. So you can see some of the Brembo stuff. Um, and with that, I will say thank you. And please take the time to walk around and, and enjoy that until, where's our little leader here?